Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Praise be to Allah alone. We all praise Him and we seek His help. Whomsoever Allah guide is a truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leaves us say none can show Him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to a new episode of Ask Kuda. Our phone numbers beginning with the code 002-0238-555-248 or 249. And the Facebook page is the R Muhammad Salah official. Uh, this information should appear on the bar on the screen, inshallah. Our first caller today, Brother Hamid from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Hamid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Dr. Salah. Ahlan wa sahlan, welcome to the program. How are you, sir? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Jazakallah khairan. I have been working here in KSA for the last 31 years. MashaAllah. Uh, years now. And alhamdulillah, I've been getting more and more educated about the true message of our good great religion Islam. May Allah reward you and your family for doing such a great service for Allah. Ameen. Jazakallahu khairan. Thank you so much. I am planning to go back to my homeland next year, inshallah. No. But before going back, I have an old wish to meet you. I want to see you on your next visit to perform, when you perform Umrah or Hajj this year. Please let me know how to do that. I have an old wish. I want you to uh, fulfill that wish for me. Jazakallahu khairan. Barakallahu fiqh. Where are you residing at? I am residing in Jubeir. Okay. In, Insha'Allah, hopefully, pray that may Allah make it easy for all of us. That hopefully I will be able to attend the Umrah in Ramadan, Insha'Allah. And normally when I go for the Umrah, I just go for uh, just a couple days in order to attend the program. As you know, Masha'Allah, we have live every day to, nowadays. Alhamdulillah, shukullah. So, Insha'Allah, I, I normally don't do that, but I will announce it, Insha'Allah, perhaps on my page before my departure. So that, inshallah, it will be very lovely to meet you, brother. Jazakallah khairan, and thank you so much. May Allah bless you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Uthman from Nigeria. Assalamu alaikum, Uthman. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi How are you today, sir? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, sir. I have, I have two questions for you. Question, mm. question number one. Uh, I was having a discussion with a friend, and um, he was saying that uh, a kafir means somebody does not have a religion. When I told him, no, 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 the meaning of a kafir uh, is that does not believe in the message of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In respect of whatever religion he belongs to, the moment he does not believe in the teachings of the of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a kafir. So please, I want to be, I want you to expand more on, on that issue. That's number one. Number two. Uh, there is this uh, divorce his wife. He just made a mention of that uh, if she if she if she calls somebody's name, she stands divorced, and she calls the person's name. Does that mean that the woman is divorced? Thank you very much. Okay, Barakallah fiq, brother Uthman. Uh, brother Hamid, assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum. I, actually, uh, I, my uh, telephone was cut, so I, I have some questions I just sure. want to answer. Yeah, please go ahead. A minor girl owns some property at the time of her death. How her property shall be distributed? This is the first question. Uh, can you give me uh, the years uh, who is... 13, 13, 13 years. Uh, you, that was your mother, right? No, my, uh, there was... Uh, uh, she's a girl, from a minor girl. Okay. She died at the age of 13, mm -hmm. but she, she owned some property. Okay. How to distribute her property? We need, to know, we need to know who is alive amongst her ears, like parents, brothers and sisters? Parents, parents, parents and brother, brothers are alive. Okay. Sisters are also alive. Okay. Okay. So. The second question is that 
uh, after she passed away, her close relatives have been seeing dreams in which they receive answers from her to the various questions which at times crop up in their minds. Is there any connection of a deceased person's soul with this world? Okay. Barakallah fiqh, brother Ham. Jazakallah khayar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Um Salah from United Arab Emirates. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. Barakallah fiki. Sir, I'm a revert Muslim, and alhamdulillah, Allah has granted me four lovely children. Alhamdulillah. And uh, I have a problem actually with the kids, you know, to convince them about music. So, could you please, 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 you know, clarify, you know, I have, I've been telling my children about the hadiths and uh, things what I'm reading about, but they don't seem to be convinced, and all the time, you know, they are trying to justify this with me. So, could you please clarify this about the music? And is it, uh, uh, what, what does Islam say about this beatboxing and this uh, making musical sounds from the mouth or from the glass or from the computer? So all the time they're just arguing with me about this uh, issues. This is the first question. And the second question is um, regarding a lizard, a home lizard. Mm -hmm. what, what does Islam say about it? I'm hearing people say there's a hadith that the moment you see it, you have to kill it. Yeah. So I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure about it. So could you please clarify this for me, please? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Allah reward you and your entire team with the very best. Ameen. Thank you. Barakallah fiki. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Nasreen from India. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you, Sister? I am fine. I have four questions. No. Uh, first one. When a lady is going through her menstruation, will her ablution is be accepted? Okay, ablution. And second one. Ablution in order to do what? Well, uh, in order to do zikra. Okay. And uh, second one, is, is it necessary to perform ablution before doing zikra? And third one, apart from offering the furs and respecting and listening to her husband, what other act should be done by a woman in order to enter the Jannah? Okay. And fourth one, it is compulsory for a woman to give a dawa. Uh, to people practicing the wrong things knowing that it may cause bitterness in the relations thank you oh, thank you sister Nassim I got all your questions sister Maggie assalamu alaikum alaikum assalam dr. Salah yes yeah, uh, I just first want to thank you for all your efforts in making us uh, understand the Dean better Thank you, Sister Barakallah Fiki. Um, my question, uh, I work, uh, I accompany daddies with clients from all over the world. So every year when Christmas is near, our chairman likes to send out emails of the Christmas greeting to our clients, which exceed over a thousand people. Mm -hmm. uh, so my, my manager, who happens to be a Christian, also assigned to me and my coworker the task of sending out these uh, messages on behalf of the chairman. Mm. I know saying Merry Christmas is not permissible, I was wondering if what I'm doing is uh, taking part of uh, this sin. Okay. Thank you, Sister well. Maggie. Uh, Brother Abu Safwan from Kuwait. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for asking. I'm fine. Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu feek. Okay. Um, I, uh, last time, you know, on the 2nd uh, of March, I asked one question. So, uh, 
uh, yeah, answer partially, so I'm still waiting for the rest. You know, about this uh, Urus and other things, you see, and the shirk. Mm -hmm. so hopefully, inshallah, today you will give. I'm waiting. Uh, no, but, no, that was answer, brother Abu Safwan. I'm pretty sure. And I no, no, you have not done. You have only give the definition for the Hablun Nas. The other one you said, now I don't have time. Yes, <laughs> uh, uh, it was answered in the following episode in detail. Uh, if I but have I, time, inshallah, okay. I'll be more than happy okay. to okay. shed some and light. Uh, now I have two, two questions. Okay. Uh, the first thing is, you see, uh, one person, you know, Alhamdulillah, is Muslim. Uh, but he has no, uh, his uh, father has died. Uh, his mother is there and he has a sister. But uh, they are not Muslim. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now he's drafting his will. So his question was, uh, can a non-Muslim be, he, he be appointed as the implementer of the will or it should be a Muslim? Okay. Okay, so this is the first question. Uh, because who who's supposed to, in case of, for God's sake, uh, something wrong, so who's supposed to uh, execute the will? Mm. Okay, the second question is, you know, these crumbs, they usually use for making, you know, this... Uh, Indian and a kebab or cutlets like those things, they use these crumbs come from the bread. Okay, usually in 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 US, they usually use some ingredient from the animal fats. Okay, but uh, they use one uh, crumbs. It has no ingredient on ingredients on it, and there is no telephone number or the whereabouts, so they can inquire about. Mm -hmm. In that case, uh, what would happen to the food they have prepared with those kind of crumbs? Do they have to investigate or just assume this is okay? Okay. These two questions, you know. Thank and you. And I shall be grateful if you tell me about this will thing because they assume they are traveling and they have to complete the will. Okay. And they get it certified certify from the court. Thanks, Raj. Jazakallah, Sheikh. Wa jazakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Aisha from the KSA, Salaamu Alaikum. Waalaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. How are you? I'm fine, Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Sister Aisha. Okay, so I have a friend. Uh, I'm working here so in Saudi here with one of my friends. And she's working in a house. She says say that the people she's working with, they always play music and they go to the party parties. They go to weddings and they play music there. And they want to know that what she's doing. Is it halal for her to do, continue doing that work? Or she should, she should, work, she should stop working with that? Well, I, I just heard or I understood that you're working somewhere and the people are playing music. If you can explain further. Well, she's working, she's working with a woman in a house in Saudi. Who's, so working, who, who's working with whom? My friend is working with them. Okay, you're asking on behalf of your, your friend who's working with a yes, woman who's. Now, you're asking on behalf of yeah, your friend? Yes, I'm asking on behalf of my friend. Okay. Then, what is happening? Yeah, they, she said they used to go for birthday parties with her. And she know that in Islam that is Arab. And they used to play their music. She used to go with them in, in weddings and they play their music. And she know that it's Haram in Islam. Now she wants to know, is that what she's doing? Is it Haram or Haram for her to continue working there? Or she should stop working? Okay. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Abdul Rauf from the KSA. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Abdul Rauf. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. How are you, brother? Go ahead. Alhamdulillah. My first question is uh, when I uh, enter daily uh, my, uh, for my Zuhar prayers in the mosque, I see a lot of people uh, praying uh, Tahiyatul Masjid or they Pray some different kind of nawafil before the start of Azan, like 10 minutes or 5 minutes before. Hmm. Uh, is it okay? Because that uh, time is basically, uh, it's not uh, recommended to pray during the during that time before the uh, Zohar uh, Azan. Okay. And our uh, Imam is also telling that when uh, he is uh, calling for the Azan that we have to stand up. Uh, we should not be sitting in the mosque. Hmm. I just want... And my second question is, I just want to know about if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives punishment to a person at a younger age, is it because that the person in future would have been more uh, uh, deviated from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why Allah gives him punishment at a younger age? Is, is it that way or Allah gives him at a, in a younger age? Okay. 
Thank you, Sheikh, for your work. Thank you, Brother Abdul Rauf. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Akbar from the UK. Assalamu alaikum, Baba. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum, Baba. Um, I have a question regarding nikah. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, what it is, um, me traditionally, I'm engaged to my fiance. Mm -hmm. Like, um, the family's agreed, but behind their back, we have done a nikah in order for me to see her uh, to be halal. So, I just want to find out is this nikah valid or is it invalid? Because I heard one of your talks. Nikah without the concern of the valid, it's not valid. Tell me what did you guys do exactly, like the procedures, the setup? Uh, the setup basically, I went to her house, I asked for her hand, and uh, she said, um, we agreed, the family said you guys could get married, but not now, in two years. And mm. I understand, for me, it would be the same thing, girlfriend and boyfriend, if I be with her. So I asked her, look, we should run the car so everything is halal for us. And that's it. And we went to the mosque and we did the nikah and there was witnesses as well and everything. Great. And the family are non Muslims? They are Muslims. They are Muslims. They are all Muslims? They are Muslims, yes. Okay, good. And uh, her guardian, uh, the father, whoever was there? Uh, no, her guardians, they agreed to do the engagement. Because it's a tradition. I am from Afghanistan. You know, this is a tradition. You get engaged for two, three years, then you do the marriage. So they said, you do it later. So, but I said, I told her, like, it's better for us to join the car. If we are engaged, it's good to have to join the car. And I'm going to marry in two years anyway. So basically, you did the nikah without the family's knowledge? Yes. Mm. Okay. Okay. Brother Akbar, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا نكاح إلا بولي وشاهد عدل. marriage will not be valid unless if the wali gives his consent and agreement, and it is witnessed by two shuhud, okay, two just witnesses. So you have to get the consent of our guardian, whoever is alive, the father, the brother, the grandfather, and so on. Uh, even if she doesn't have a wali, then we'll go to the leader of the Muslim community, the imam of the Islamic community or the Islamic center could be her appointed guardian. But now there is a guardian. If they are stubborn, they don't want to give her in marriage and you guys are ready and they have no reason. So this way you can resort to the imam of the masjid, but they don't have a problem. So basically, According to the most right view, without the consent of the guardian, this nikah is invalid. Okay? Brother Akbar, Jazakallah Khair. Brother Aqib from the KSA, Assalamu Alaikum. Assalamu Alaikum. Yes, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalamu Alaikum. Please don't get, that, uh, don't get bothered with my question. I'm asking it again. But earlier, I didn't know the exact terms and conditions of the bank. I asked you about the credit card. Uh, there is a bank here in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I, have taken, I have taken a credit card, but I asked you a question and I did not activate it. Now they told me that the, uh, the conditions are there. It's a prepaid credit card, so I can transfer from my bank to the credit card. So the amount which I transfer from my bank to the credit card, that I can use to buy things. So in that case, I, that the bank does not give me any extra credit or extra limit. So there is no case uh, of, you know, giving interest because whatever money I'll transfer, I'll, I'll be able to use only that. But uh, the annual fee for that credit card is 100 riyals. Mm. So is it not a type of interest? Well, why don't you just use a debit card instead? Because it's basically the same. Your credit card now is nothing but a debit card. You are charging of your account. Uh, Just a reminder for all the callers, please mute your TV once you pick up the phone. Jazakum Allah khair. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> now, if, if you're using the credit card of your account, like you have to deposit a certain amount and that would be your balance, and you spend out of this balance, then this is basically a debit card. W what is the need for a credit card? It would do the job if this is the case. And if, if a credit card or so-called credit card is charging you from your account directly without having to pay any interest or even after 40 days or 45 days or whatever, 
and they charge you like monthly, they charge you an annual fee for the card and for processing the paperwork and so on. This is not interest. This is valid. The problem is with charging you extra charge for late payment, and that is called interest. Barakallah fikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Brother Abu Bakr from Gambia. How are you, sir? Assalamu alaikum. I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Abu Bakr, how are you? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Abu Bakr, do me a favor and mute your TV before we start. Okay. I thank you. Now we can proceed on. Okay, now. Now. Okay, I want to ask three questions. Mm hmm. Um, one, apart from Prophet Musa alayhi salam, has uh, any other prophet received wahyu direct from Allah without a mediator? Okay. Two, what is the Islamic view on a Muslim who, when making a dua, seeks his dua to be answered through the barakah of a sheikh or an imam or his parents or even through the barakah of a prophet. And three. No. Okay, okay. Those are the two questions, sir. The other one I'll ask another two. Okay. Thank you. Mm, thank you, Abu Bakr. Your second question is about the means of approach or al wasila. Barakallah fiq. Sister Um Salah, mashallah, may Allah keep you steadfast, is a revert. And she said that she's having uh, a hard time with her children, convincing them not to listen to music uh, uh, and so on. I, I guess you're not alone. You know, teenagers are teenagers everywhere and in every society. And because of that, you really need to seek the help of the most powerful, the one and the only one who can help and deliver, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, the, the greatest solution to all the problems is to keep making dua and asking Allah the Almighty to guide your children, to guide you and your family and keep you steadfast on the straight path. It works and it does wonders. It is amazing. Number two, as far as convincing, if the person reads all the hadith and he is not convinced, the person has reached a level where he can say the receptors are locked up. The receptors are not reacting with the dalil, with the inspiration, with the ahadith, with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm sorry to say that this is similar to when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا أَمْ عَلَى قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا If you were at the time of the companions, a companion would boycott his own child if he were to say that there is a sunnah or there is something disliked and he does it or he does not do it, he would boycott him for a simple thing. Why? Because he's antagonizing the statement of the Prophet ﷺ. But we are in a different era. So we have to be very patient and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide our children. There has to be a role model. There has to be a halqa that the whole family get together and attend and that has to be replaced with an alternative. I bet you that the relationship with the Quran is not that good because it's either the Quran or songs and music because they do not, they do not agree together. They're not compatible. They can never coexist in the heart and the mind of one person. It's the other, they recite Quran on a regular basis and memorize it and study its meaning. Then trust me, the issue of music is when we started this way, we did not have any resistance towards not listening to music because we did not really desire it. We did not desire to listen to songs. I know that our peer, our colleagues were into music, wearing their earphones or headphones and walking and dancing and all of that, trying to be westernized. Why? Because this vessel, which is the heart, did not have any of the Quran. Once it is filled with the Quran, like what do you read? How much do you read every day? What's your sabaq? And how much do you understand of the Quran? What about the memorization? What about the revising and all of that? 
once the receptors are saturated with the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no more room for the word of the shaitan. The shaitan makes it seem fair to his followers, to his allies. But in order to bring our children into the pain of Islam, to become awliya Allahi salihin, then it starts very early as a matter of fact. It starts with the Quran, it starts with raising the children you see from the moment of birth. Why? According to some ahadith, which some consider sahih, some consider weak, we have to call the adhan in the right ear so that the, the first, the first word that the, the baby would hear once he or she comes to this world is the word of Allah, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then once again, whenever we say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has said, oh, the time will come where people will treat drinking, adultery, wearing silk for men, and listening to music as halal. Well, that means originally and according to the diversion meaning, it is not halal. These four items were put together. It is not halal. The four schools of thoughts, and all the imams, the, of the founders of the four schools of thoughts, are of the view that all sorts of music is haram and musical instrument, except, of course, playing the daf during holidays, celebrations, uh, festivals, and wedding, and so on. As far as the musical uh, instrument or percussions, which produces sound similar to the musical instrument, if the audience could not distinguish between the two sounds like it is done by humming or percussions, not by musical instruments, but computerized and it produces the same sound, then the mission is, is, is accomplished. It is the same. It is the same. But if you're talking about the humming, which can be understood, this is the humming of the mouth or a, a man humming. When you hear uh, Sheikh uh, Mashari, for instance, making a beautiful nasheed or song, Without music, with the humming, it's amazing, it's beautiful, right? This is permissible. But if it leads to the same sound, it should be treated like musical instruments exactly. According to the vast majority of Muslims, of Ahlul Sunnah al Jama'ah, the mainstream of the Ummah, uh, listening to such music, special music, which is made for uh, or accompanied with singing. And just ask any of your children to pull, to pull out any of those songs and play it. Would it be about something inspirational or about love and a boyfriend and a girlfriend and all of that and affection? It incites the fitna in the heart of the audience. So this is the type of music which there is no dispute that it is not uh, permissible. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Muhammad from Oman. Uh, how are you, Sheikh? I'm fine, alhamdulillah, thank you for asking. Barakallahu feek. Sheikh, I have uh, three questions, inshallah. No. Um, my first question is uh, regarding uh, zina. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran uh, clearly, uh, you know, says that the, you know, the punishment for uh, zina is like, you know, uh, stoning to death. I know, so that's, that's, that's from, there is a hadith. So, uh, now there are people who have been committing this act, um, and it's become very common, you know, nowadays. So, uh, if they are to repent, like, uh, did, do they, I mean, how, what is the punishment for them? I mean, will they be punished or uh, will Allah accept the repentance or how is it? I mean, and also, um, as related to this question, is like there are a lot of young guys who say that, you know, the actual uh, act, I mean, actual act is uh, called zina. If, if it is anything other than that, it, it does not come in the, that category. So, can you please clarify on this point so that, you know, it will help uh, all of us. Okay, thank you, Brother Muhammad. And um, my second question is uh, regarding the spirituality. I mean, there are some days, you know, uh, your Iman is, uh, you, you feel uh, there is a high um, in your Iman, but sometimes you feel really low. Mm. So during the times when you feel low, uh, I mean, is there anything that we can do to, uh, I mean, like uh, some form of some, some, some supplication or some prayer that we can do so that we can, you know, boost our Iman? No, what, sure. do you, what do you advise us to uh, do okay. uh, in during those times? Your third question, and, please. Uh, yeah, and the third question is uh, regarding uh, the marriage. In, in in Indian subcontinent, usually there is there is a, there is a custom that like 
there are some people who uh, who take the money from the bride's uh, father and they they club together the money and then they do the walima mm. is it allowed is it permissible uh, what is the ruling uh, regarding that jazakum jazakum allah khair wa jazakum thank you sister khulud from jordan assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam how are you dr mohammed i'm fine alhamdulillah thank you for asking sister Thank you. Dr. Mohammed, please, I want to ask you how to donate uh, for the channel. Okay, sure, inshallah. Barakallahu okay. feek. And there is another, uh, there is a question. Hmm. Okay, Dr. Mohammed, what to do when you see everything around you wrong? Uh, I'm a teacher. The principal of the school is unfair person. She stands with the uh, oppressor teachers. When I try to advise her, she doesn't listen. I don't know what to do. She wants to stay a principal. That's what cares her. Just she doesn't care for anything else. She doesn't um, treat the teacher equally or even the students. Really, I'm suffering from this thing. I don't know what to do. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Khulud. We're gonna take a short break, and I would kindly request to hold on your calls until I answer these pending uh, questions. So after the break, inshallah, soon after the break, we'll start answering those questions. Stay tuned. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, Brother Uthman's first question, whenever a non-Muslim does good deeds, what would they get? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّ الْكَافِرَ إِذَا عَمِلَ حَسَنَةً أُطْعِمَ بِهَا طُعْمَةً فِي الدُّنْيَا They will be rewarded for their good deeds in the life of this world, the good for good and the bad for bad. But on the hereafter, they will be dealt with according to their faith. So the good deeds that the non-Muslims do will be rewarded for in the life of this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says by the end of Surah Al-Kahf, قُلْ هَا نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالَ أَلَّذِينَ ظَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنْعَ Shall we not tell you and inform you about the greatest losers, those whose effort and striving in the life of this world was in vain because they've done it for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They did so while thinking that they were doing good. Who are they? أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا. As a result of their disbelief, حبطت أعمالهم their deeds were ruined. يعني they will not be rewarded for any good deed they've done on the year after. Why? Even Muslims. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said that Allah the Almighty says, من أشرك في شيء تركته وشركه. Whosoever associates with me any in any good deed I would abandon the whole deed altogether as far as you second question when somebody divorces his wife without uttering her name like say you're divorced does he have to utter her name no he doesn't and if he says intended the word divorce he says divorced and he means with the word to divorce his wife then divorce is effective but if he utter the word and it's not directed to his wife whatsoever, then it's not a divorce. Here what would really count is the intention. But if he addressed his wife as a second person or told people as addressing his wife as a third person, she's divorced or you're divorced, then the divorce is effective. Brother Hamid from the KSA, a girl died and left behind parents and uh, brothers and sisters. It doesn't really matter at what age she died. She, he said that 13. May Allah give her parents patience. Allahumma ameen. But if she had some property, the mother will get one sixth of the property. Because Allah the Almighty says, فَإِن كَانَ لَهُ إِخْوَةٌ فَلِأُمِّهِ السُّدُسِ She will get one sixth. And the father will get the rest of the inheritance. And he will block all the brothers and sisters. When the father is living, the brothers and sisters will get nothing, okay? And what they will get, much bigger than all of that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith that Allah the Almighty rewards the person who is patient whenever his child 
is dead in his life by saying Khaztum, uh, you've taken the soul or the son the soul of the son of my servant yes what did he say they said Hamadaka was tarja he thanked you he said Alhamdulillah was tarja said inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon as a result of that of this reaction of being patient and submitting yourself to the will of Allah Allah will say to the angels build for my servant a house in paradise and name it Bayt Alham the house of praise or thanks uh, Sister Um Salah second question with regards to killing the home or the domestic lizard yes there are a hadith in this regard and there will be a reward for killing the home lizard from the first time from the first try and basically it has been explained in other hadith and these are sound hadith like one hadith is collected by Imam Muslim there is like a hundred good deeds for killing the lizard from the first strike the reason because he used to blow on the fire in which Ibrahim السلام, was thrown in it that was the only animal which did so sister Nasreen from India um, there are a couple of questions pertaining performing wudu during the period in order to make the number one whenever the woman is in a major uh, impurity like the menses it means that there are certain acts of worship that she cannot do praying performing tawaf fasting and obviously not having a relationship with her husband I'm talking about the complete intimate relationship okay but the zikr, she has 24-7 access to make zikr. She doesn't have to make wudu. She is already in hide. Even if the person, brothers and sisters, is not in a major impurity and wants to make zikr, al wudu is not a condition for the validity of zikr or even reciting Quran by heart. But it is recommended. As a matter of fact, it is recommended to maintain wudu even without doing any act of worship. As the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Bilal ibn Rabah that he could hear his footsteps in heaven and he inquired from him, what do you do? He said, every time I avoid my wudu, I rush to make a new wudu. So by maintaining the condition of purity or ablution or wudu all the time, and obviously after making wudu, praying to rakaz of sunnah al wudu, Bilal ibn Rabah reserved his seat in heaven. Um, sister, and Nisreen also asks in her third question that besides obeying one's husband, fulfilling the fard, what else do I have to do in order to enter heaven? The Prophet said, إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرْأَةُ فَرْضَهَا or خَمْسَهَا If the woman offers her five daily prayers and obeys her Lord in the rest of the commands, obeys her husband وَأَطَاعَ الزَّوْجَهَا وَحَفِظَتْ فَرْجَهَا and guards her chastity. She is a modest woman. It will be said to her, enter paradise from whichever gate you choose. And the heaven has eight gates. Okay. Her fourth question is, does a woman have to give da'wah to some family members who are committing sins if that is going to lead to severing her relations with them? As a matter of fact, that every person should enjoin what is right and forbid what is evil. This is your duty. What really matters and what will make all the difference is the procedure, the method. How do you approach them? How do you give them da'wah? Being blunt and telling them that what you're doing is haram and you're going to hell, it will put off any person, not only your relatives, but trying to be kind, introducing to your advice with that I love you for the sake of Allah, I love for you or I love for myself. As the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once advised Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, may Allah be pleased with him, and he, he advised him with very tough advice. He said in the beginning, I love you. And he said, you're a weak person in certain matters. Don't you ever accept the leadership even over two, or the guardianship over the worth of an orphan. So accordingly, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari accepted the advice, giving a beautiful introduction would soften and make it milder because the human being and the human soul normally does not like people to correct it and so on. But we should continue to enjoy what is right and forbid what is evil. Sister Maggie 
uh, working in a company that the manager is Christian and they have to send the congratulation of the Christmas, Happy Christmas to everybody. I'm the one who does so. No, you're not allowed to do so because we're not allowed to congratulate people for celebrating the birth of whom they think that he's the son of God. Allah has no children. Allah the Almighty is the only one he begets not, nor was he begotten. And propagating this uh, myth is, is disbelief, and we're not supposed to be a part of this. Um, Brother Abu Safwan's first question, that a family, somebody died, and can a Muslim be in charge of implementing the wasiyah? No problem. But for your information, the Prophet said, لا توارث بين أهل ملتين. So a Muslim should not inherit a non-Muslim, nor a non-Muslim should inherit from a Muslim. Okay? With regards to the animal fat which is used in making the bread, the animal fat takes the same ruling like the meat. So if the meat is halal, the animal fat is halal. But if the meat is not halal, then the animal fat off or the source is not halal, then the animal fat is not halal. If it is used in cooking eggs or baking bread, then it's not permissible to consume. Sister Aisha's friend is working for somebody, a woman who plays music all the time and takes her to places where she has to listen to music. If you have the luxury of choosing who is your employer, then find the alternative. If none, there is a difference between a sama' wa al-istima'. You know, you ride with a bus driver who's playing music, you ask him, he says, well, this is my bus, if you don't like it, take a hike. What can you do? You're not actually listening. You're forced to listen. That's called sama'. You hear people talking. You cannot plug your ears. Okay, Abdullah ibn Umar used to plug his ears. You don't have to do that. But the problem is with al istimah like you're listening, you're enjoying, and you're living in the mood. But of course, if you do have the alternative, a better offer, a better job, you have to change. Uh, Brother Abdul Ra'uf from the KSA, enter in the masjid before Zuhr prayer, or at any say time, the more right view that you should not sit down before praying Tahiyyat al-Masjid, even if the time is dislike to pray any nawafil. But this is a prayer which has an, a, a reason, so it's necessary, that's called an emphatic sunnah. As far as the advice of whoever that you must stand up when you hear the Adhan, that is not true. You can hear the Adhan while sitting down, you don't have to stand up, okay? Uh, if a, a person was punished in his young age, is this a sign that Allah was going to punish him? We don't know. This is something in the unseen. You remember with Musa alayhi salam, he objected to what the Khadr did to the young boy when he killed him. Why? Because Musa, even though he was a prophet, he was the prophet of his time. But he did not know why Al Khadr had killed the child. He was in need for an explanation. Then later on he said, because this child, if he was to grow up, he will become an unbeliever. He will give his parents a hard time. But this way he was saved and his parents too were saved and Allah will give them a better replacement. But we don't know. Anything that comes, we should treat it as follows. ما يصيب المسلم من هم ولا نصب ولا وصب حتى الشوكة يشاكها إلا كفر الله بها من خطايا. Anything that afflicts the believer is good for him because it erases some of his sins. It's a means of ransom and remitting some of his sins. This is how we should look at it and accept the decrees of Allah, whether good or what seems to be bad, with full submission and pleasure. You have to be patient. Uh, Abu Bakr from Gambia. Is there any other prophet who received the wahi directly from Allah? You mean spoke to Allah without a barrier? Yes, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the command of the prayer during the journey of Al-Mi'raj was directly from Allah to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam ascended above the seven heaven and he went to Sidrat al-Muntaha where Jibreel alayhi salam was not allowed to proceed. Uh, is it permissible to ask Allah to accept your dua via the means of a righteous person or a prophet or whatever? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu Allah wa bitaghu ilayhi al-wasila tawajahidu fi sabilihi la'allakum tuflihun Surah Al-Ma'idah Seek the means of approach, which is in another ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
ولله الأسماء الحسنى فدعوه بها That is the greatest means of approach. Number one, invoke Allah via His beautiful names. Ya Allah, Ya Ghafur, Ya Rahim, Ya Sami'a Dua. That is the best means of approach. What about, I still like to say, Oh Allah, for the blessings of such and such, living or dead, bless me. No. Why not? Because this is an act of worship that the Prophet ﷺ never did, nor did he approve. Rather, the love of Prophet Muhammad ﷺ and the righteous servants of Allah is mandatory. Loving the Prophet ﷺ is an act of worship. So the person may say, Oh Allah, due to my love to you and to your Prophet and to your deen, accept my dua. That's perfectly okay. Because Hubbun Nabi, the love of the Prophet, the love of Allah is an act of worship. And the person can basically seek the means of approach through his own ibadat. And we have talked about that for so long before. Brother Muhammad from Oman. Nowadays, many people are involved in adultery. How can a person repent or does it go through the punishment? No, in fact, if the person is sincere in his repentance, he doesn't have to admit his sin to no one. There is no sharia applied, as you know, almost everywhere. And even if there is, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said to Ma'az when he came to confess his sin of adultery, he said, you may have just kissed, you may have just hugged, he returned him four times. And the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith of Ubad ibn al-Samit and the hadith is collected by Imam al-Bukhari. Whoever stays away from all the sins which have been listed in the bay'ah, in the pledge, six articles, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them. فَمَنْ وَفَّ فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَمَنْ أَصَابَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ شَيْئًا فَعُوقِبَ بِهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا فَهُوَ كَفَّارَةٌ لَهِ وَمَنْ أَصَابَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ شَيْئًا ثم ستره الله فأمره إلى الله إن شاء عفى عنه وإن شاء عاقبه. If the sin was concealed and the person repented in the life of this world without undergoing any punishment according to the hadith, then his case will be up to Allah. He may forgive him, he may punish him. But with the sincere repentance, at-tawbatu tajubbu ma qablaha. The person must be sincere in his repentance. Some youth say that the introduction to adultery is not actually adultery. One thing leads to another. And as a matter of fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not forbid zina by saying do not commit adultery. He said in Surah Al-Isra, وَلَا تَقَرَبُ zina." Don't go near to adultery. And I bet you, I challenge you, once a person touches a woman of a hand who's not lawful to, her, to him, and, she, and he's not lawful to her, and stays with her behind closed doors, definitely they would fall in the major sin. The Prophet sallallahu said, the eye commits zina, and the zina of the eyes is by looking at what Allah prohibited, the tongue, the hearing, the hand, and the feet. وَالْفَرْجُ يُصَدِّقُ ذَلِكَ كُلَّهُ وَيُكَذِّبَ The person would actually either fulfill and act upon the introductions of zina by involving in complete in a course or not. But these are all introductions which count as uh, adultery. Um, a brother uh, Muhammad from Oman also with regards to when you feel your iman is very weak. I have episodes spoke about increasing the iman and the, and how and the means of increasing the iman. But simply, iman increases by doing good deeds. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, لا يزني الزاني حين يزني وهو مؤمن ولا يسرق السارق حين يسرق وهو مؤمن When the person is involved in such a major sin, he is not truly a believer. His iman is very low. So, al-iman increases by doing good deeds and decreases by indulging in two sins, repenting. Making wudu, praying two rakahs, would boost your iman right away. Leaving the place, the meeting, or the spot in which you are about to do something, uh, a disobedience or a sin. Uh, making wudu and praying two rakahs, uh, being dismissed, these are all acts which would boost uh, your iman. As far as the practice in India that the person would collect the dowry and, and the gift from the woman, that's not valid. You know, the right setup is the man is the one who has to pay the dowry and offer the feast and the walima and furnish the house and bring the housing and support the bride. You know, we used to joke about it in America and say, I'm going to India. Why to find a wife to support me? That's not permissible. In fact, 
I'm talking about a general treatment. This is not right. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the man, Iltamis walaw khataman min hadid. You have to find a dowry even if it is just a simple little ring. Remains for us, uh, Sister Khulud, to donate. You'll find all of the information on our website, inshaAllah, in the bank account. And meanwhile, with regards to your uh, uh, headmaster or principal, that follow the legal ways of complaining and be patient because you will meet a lot of obstacles, not only with the administrator, a lot of zulm and oppression. So sometimes you have to be patient and endure these oppressions patiently. Meanwhile, if there is a legit legitimate way to complain, do it, find another job, permissible. Uh, if, if it is available, that is perfectly fine. And a dua, make dua, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala either guide her or take her away uh, from your way. I think we did answer all the, the questions, alhamdulillah. Barakallahu fikum, and until next time, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the altar